Hi, my name is Angela Mack, and I'm Executive Director of the Gibbs Museum of Art. And today I have the pleasure and privilege of talking about an artist that is near and dear to my heart. Mary Jackson has been part of the Gibbs fabric uh, here in Charleston for many years. And in fact, in the early 1980s, we hosted her very first solo exhibition for the museum. As a result of these early relationships with Mary and watching her career progress over the um, interceding decades, we have had the opportunity with a recent renovation of the museum that reopened in 2016 to mount this wonderful gallery that is in her honor, the Mary Jackson Modern and Contemporary Gallery. In this gallery, we feature one of her seminal pieces, and it's the work that is behind me that is the largest work she has ever created. What's most interesting about this particular work it's, is the way that it was always meant to be displayed, and that is as if it is hovering on the wall. We achieve this by using several magnets on the interior lip so that no distortion is created to the basket itself. And of course, the roundness, the beautiful sweeping curves of the work itself are accentuated by the design element that seems to be left unfinished, but of course is totally intentional. Mary has titled this particular work, Never Again. And the reason is because it is the largest basket she has ever created. It took her three years to complete, and as a result, she never plans to pursue this approach again. Hi, my name is Antoine Ford, and I am a sweetgrass basket weaver, and also a sweetgrass gestalt sculptor. I'm also a former visiting artist here at the Gibbs Museum, and I am truly honored to be here to speak about Mary Jackson's basket, Never Again. The Never Again piece is very inspirational to me as it shows how you can break the boundaries while using sweet grass, and, and it also shows how sweet grass basketry can be looked at as modern art. I began learning how to make sweetgrass baskets at the age of four by watching my grandmother make them in the kitchen. Um, the, the craft of, of making sweetgrass baskets has been passed down from generation to generation. Uh, the baskets were once used on the rice plantations here in South Carolina and also in Georgia. One of the principles that we can find in the Never Again piece is the principle of similarity. If we look at each of her coilings, each coil is similar to the other, and that's very consistent throughout the piece. And then there's also the principle of proximity, where we have distance playing a role here, whereas each coil has a certain amount of distance between the nets, and that's continued throughout the entire piece. And then the more the more obvious would be the principle of continuation. The principle of continuation happens when the eye is forced to travel in a certain direction. And here we see that happening with each individual row. It's been a true pleasure to talk about Mary Jackson's work, and I would like for you to come by and see it in person. Thanks.